My name is Jordan Kepler. I'm from San Inez, California. I'm a full-time graphic designer and a part-time bladesmith. I do a lot of camping out of my truck, out there having one knife that you can chop wood, make your campfire, prep dinner, all that stuff is uh, pretty important. My name is Jesse Overton. I'm 28, and I am from Medford, Oregon. I was in the Marine Corps for four years. Being in the Marine Corps, uh, one of the biggest things that we pride ourselves on is being able to adapt and being flexible. And I think that all those things really are going to make me prepared for this competition. Jordan, Jesse, congratulations. It is now between the two of you to figure out who's going home with the title of Forge and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. Now, in the final round of competition, you guys are going back home to work on an iconic weapon from history. And that weapon is... The Headhunter's Axe. The Headhunter Axe is both a tool and a weapon of the native Igara tribe who hail from the mountains of the Philippines. Featuring a sharp spike on one side that is used to pierce shields and armor, it also contained a wide lethal axe head on the other side designed to swiftly decapitate enemies in the heat of battle. An intimidating weapon, tribes would display the heads of their victims to strike fear into their enemies. The legacy of this deadly axe lives on today and can be seen in the video game State of Decay, Breakdown. So good luck. We will see you in three days. Good luck, man. We're back day one at my home forge here in San Inez, California. I'm going to be making a headhunter's axe. So we're getting close to forge welding temperature, uh, but this is definitely a pivotal moment to know that my forge welds are set and they're really nice. And it's a homogenous piece of steel all the way through. So this has got to be perfect right now. I'm really excited to see that it actually forge welded. Today, the biggest hurdle is going to be that heat treat. It's a weird shape. Let's hope everything goes well. That thing just doesn't fit in there very well. This is a little nerve wracking, making sure that it is perfectly heated across the board. There we go. We got a definite warp right there. I need to run into my straightening jig, straighten it, and let it sit and wait. Oh, man, it's perfectly straight. Yes! Only one day left. We're going to try and get some pins through here to make sure that not only we have a chemical connection to the blade, but we have a mechanical connection. We're through! Now I'm going to get everything pretty much to final finish. That is looking Mean. Yeah, she's sharp. <laughs> I'm back at my home forge here in Medford, Oregon. I don't really have any time to make mistakes. Kind of my strategy is to draw out the spike in first. That's going to be the hardest and longest thing to draw out. So I get done forging, and now it's time for the quench. And uh, I'm feeling pretty nervous. I feel like my guts are in my throat. Oh, yeah. We did it! It's hard! We're sitting pretty good for day two. I'm getting all the final touches on the axe head. I really want to make sure that I get this axe nice and sharp. I opened up a seam where my weld had met the actual socket. If I weld on this for too long, then it's going to ruin my heat treat. I think we got it. The bladesmithing gods have looked out for me. The gap is gone. So relieved right now. I was doing a little bit of research on the warriors of this tribe, and I noticed that there's certain tattoos that they give warriors after they behead somebody. So I'm going to incorporate some of those designs into the handle. That way, it'll give some good traction, but also look badass. Nice thick coat on there. It's looking really nice. But I really want to see if my edge geometry is there. So I decided to do a cut test. <laughs> Oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> On round two of my knife, it did not cut very well. So to know that I'm actually able to make something that can cut and do it well, it feels really good. I'd say it's a pass in my book. Gentlemen, welcome back to the forge. Both your blades look absolutely deadly, but there's really only one way we can find out if they are as deadly as they look. We've got a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill. Blazemiths, welcome to the keel test. The Igorot Headhunter's Axe, a weapon that I've always fantasized about because it's very close to my Filipino heritage. To find out what kind of lethal damage your Headhunter's Axe will do, 
I will take your weapon and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Jordan, are you ready? Because I am. So <laughs> let's do this. Right now, I'm pretty intimidated. If that spike hits the backbone or the skull or anything like that, I think it'd snap right off. All right, Jordan, let's talk about your headhunter's axe here. Your edges here are very sharp. With every strike, it dug in very deep into this ballistics dummy. The spike you have here, even digging into the skull, did not bend. It feels good in the hand, and more importantly, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Jesse, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm feeling nervous. I'm worried about my axe head flying off the socket because those bones are dense. You know, going into a human skull is not an easy task. He headbutted me. <laughs> All right, Jesse, let's talk about your headhunter's axe over here. First up, the handle construction. Somebody did some research in some Polynesian tattoos there. Looks good, and it feels good in the hand. Your edges here penetrated very deep into this ballistics dummy. Now, your spike here, not only did it penetrate the skull, but it also cut it, and it stayed true. Overall, sir, your headhunter's axe Little kill. Thanks, Doug. All right, gentlemen, welcome to our strength test, the bamboo and skull chop. Now you get two totally different materials here. You got the springy bamboo that likes to bounce things back, and the skulls that like to break edges. So we're going to test both ends and the overall construction of your headhunter's axes. Jordan, you're smiling, so you're up first. How about that? <laughs> yes, sir. OK, let's do it. Jordan, nice job. Take a breath now. OK. <laughs> now everything held up nicely. Everything's tight. Doesn't look like anything moved. Your edges are still sharp. I mean, the fact that you made this thing light, tough, and in Damascus in three days, that's a heck of a feat. Good job. Thank you. All right, Jesse, how you feel after seeing that? Not good. <laughs> Not good? It'll be fine. Don't worry okay. about it. one, man. All right, Jesse, on the plus side, it felt great in the hand, and your edges held up just fine. But just all the shock wave from the force of those strikes split the handle almost in half. So definitely not going to be able to continue testing with this weapon. Well, Jesse, we absolutely hate to see that happen. Phenomenal job on your blade itself. But unfortunately, you had a catastrophic failure when your handle broke. And for that reason, we can no longer continue testing your weapon. I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. I felt a little heartbroken seeing something that I put so much work into would be broke. But I came onto this competition just to prove that I can compete with some of the best bladesmiths out there. And I know I've already accomplished that. So I still feel like I'm going home a winner. 
Well, Jordan, you survived the test. Your blade came out on top, so congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and there's a $10,000 check waiting for you outside that door. Very well done. <laughs> I just won Forge and Fire. I don't really know what to say right now. Sasquatch is kind of my mascot, and so I feel like that's a Sasquatch-worthy axe.